Recording in progress. Welcome to our Kingdom Petition Service. We're glad to see you out with us this evening. We're hoping to have a good time as we come to the midweek refreshing. This is the time when we come to recalibrate, rejuvenate, refresh ourselves and to be revived to get us through the rest of the week. So I just want to praise God with you and for you and thank you for being here for our kingdom petition service this evening. I trust that you will have a wonderful time today as we worship and praise the Lord together. We're going to have a good time in Jesus name. Amen. Can somebody say amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I uh, just want to welcome those who are joining us live for our streaming on Facebook. As always, we are happy to have you join in our services. And I trust that this evening again, you will be blessed as we go through the service. We are going to start off uh, with having a couple of praise songs to get us into our kingdom petition. Again, welcome and God bless you this evening. Good night, everyone. Good Let's evening. Let's get our hearts and minds that um, space to worship God. And just sing along with me, mute your mics, and enjoy the liberty of Jesus Christ tonight. Yes, I Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name, mighty warrior, you are great in battle, Jehovah is your name, mighty warrior, you are great in battle, Jehovah is your name, Jehovah is your name, oh God, Jehovah is your name, Jehovah is your name, O oh God, Jehovah is your name. You're a mighty warrior, you are great in battle, Jehovah is your name. You're a mighty warrior you are great in battle Jehovah is your name hallelujah you're a mighty warrior you are great in battle Jehovah is your you're a mighty, you're a mighty warrior, God. You are great in battle. Jehovah is your name. He made a way when our backs are against the wall. 
long and it looked as if it was over you you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way standing here not knowing how we'll get through this test but holding on to faith you know best nothing can catch you by surprise you got this figured out you're watching us now when it looks as if we can't win you wrap us in your arms and step in and everything we need you supply you got this in control now we know that you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over lord you you made a way and we're standing here god only because you made a way you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over lord you you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way now we're here looking back on where we've come from because of you and nothing we've done god to deserve the love and mercy you've shown but your grace was strong enough to pick us up and you made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over lord you you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way you move mountains and you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles and there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you made you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power, oh God. You perform miracles. There is nothing that's impossible. And we're standing here only because you made, you move mountains, oh God. You cause walls to fall with your power oh lord you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you made and we're standing here god only because you made and we're standing here only because you made a way you made a way don't know how but you did it you made a way god don't know how but you did it lord you made a way don't know why but i'm grateful don't know why but i'm grateful don't know why, but I'm grateful you made a way.
Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Christiana, uh, for the praise. Indeed, God does make a way. Amen. Uh, no matter what we're going through, the fact that we're standing here that we're sitting where we are, that we are, we have oxygen, as somebody said today. It's a testimony that God makes a way. Again, we are happy to have you, and we are also happy to have with us our beloved Pastor Branner. At this time, we'll have our opening prayer. Uh, Pastor Branner, would you pray for us, please? Certainly. Our oh, Father, we thank you for the blessing this evening of sharing this time together. We pray that your promise, of which you have given to us as comfort and security, would yet again be appropriated to us. That in the gathering of one or two or two or three in your name, your promise is that you will show up large and in charge. So we humbly submit ourselves into your care. We ask for the prominence of your spirit to be felt in our experience together. We pray that we would be brought to the throne of grace with a new sense of your presence awaking in us a renewed sense of joy. We thank you and praise you in Christ's name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everyone. Good I'm sure evening. To us this evening from Good evening. Proverbs. Are you hearing me? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Proverbs 15, verse 13. A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. My sister Christiana won't be able to sing. Okay. I'll do a song. Okay, go ahead, sister Angie. Praise the Lord. My heart can sing. When I pause to remember a heartache here is but a stepping stone along a trail that's winding always upward this troubled world is not my final home. But until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with the joy I'll carry on. Until Until the day God calls me home. 
lose their value if we recall they're borrowed for a while and the things of earth that cause the heart to tremble remember there will only bring a smile but until then my heart will go on singing until then with a joy i'll carry on until the day my eyes behold that city until the day God calls me home, but until then, my heart will go on singing, until then, with a joy I'll carry Amen. Amen. Until then, my heart will go on singing. Until then, with joy, I'll carry on. Until the day mine eyes behold the city. Until the day God calls me home. Thank you, Sister Angelia, for encouragement through song. Whatever it is that we're going through now, whatever challenges that we're facing, whatever heartaches and headaches and trials, we can still keep on singing. Amen. Maintaining our peace and our joy in the midst of our pain and our discomfort and our discouragements. We can keep singing because one of these days, it will all be over when God calls us home. Amen. Thank you again for being here with us for our kingdom petition this evening. I want us to, uh, for our focus this evening, look at this passage of scripture in Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 13. It says, a happy heart. What kind of heart? A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. I want us this evening to focus our attention on the subject, I will be happy. I will be happy. I would just like to pray again. Father God, speak to our hearts now. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I will be happy. I will be happy. Everyone wants to be happy, amen? I certainly want to be happy. And I trust that all of you feel the same way, that you, you want to be happy. Uh, happiness is something that we all desire. We like to be in a space where we feel good, where we... We are having positive feelings and there is positive energy around us. We all want to be happy, but unfortunately, sometimes happiness seems to elude us. 
uh, because of disappointments in life. Uh, sometimes we're in that space where we don't feel happy because uh, of the hurt that we have experienced or are still experiencing. Uh, sometimes we seem to be missing out on being happy because of the abuses that we have had to endure. And sometimes life has just dealt us what we consider an unfair hand. Things happen in our experiences that destroy our happiness, our sense of ease, our sense of comfort. And, and, and we get into that space where we long to feel good. The pain becomes unbearable. The brokenness seems unfixable. And happiness just seems to elude us. How do we find that space of happiness? Closely tied to happiness is, is the issue of forgiveness. You see, often in our experience, we are in that space where we are unhappy, where we are miserable, where, where, where we are just having a lot of negative energy. It, it's because we're struggling with forgiveness because of the same hurts, the pain, the disappointments, the disenchantments the sicknesses, the, the diseases that just seem to just fold themselves into our experiences and, and we find ourselves wrapped in these uncomfortable and discomforting circumstances physically, mentally, and emotionally. And, and, and it is hard to get to that space of forgiveness. And, and so the question that lingers is, who is really responsible? for our happiness? Who is responsible for your happiness? Who is responsible for my happiness? And the truth is, I am responsible for my happiness. Regardless of what has been dealt to me, regardless of what has been done to me, regardless of how I have been treated and, and the people around me that have done me ill, to get to that place of happiness, it is your responsibility. It is my responsibility to get myself into that space. And so if you're here this evening and you've had to deal with those emotions, those feelings, or if you know someone who is struggling with getting to that happy place, Hopefully you can take away something that you can encourage yourself and that you can encourage someone else to get into that happy space, into that happy place, because we're all responsible for our own happiness. It is important that in order to get there, that you let go of the rights, the, the, the rights to have someone else meet your needs. The, the, the rights to have someone do something to make you feel good or to do something to make you feel better. It, it, it is important that you stop that belief, let go of that belief that somebody owes you. Somebody owes me an apology. Somebody needs to tell me that they're sorry. Somebody needs to pay me. Somebody needs to do something. And so we have these expectations that in order to get to that space, somebody needs to do something to get me there because it's their fault why I'm in this space. And they need to fix it. But the truth is that nobody has to provide for your needs. Nobody needs to apologize to you. Nobody needs to say uh, they're sorry. It's a good thing. Jesus requires of us to, to apologize, to say we are sorry. You know, he said in the scripture that in Matthew chapter 
uh, I think it's chapter 15, where he says that if, if, if you're going to pray and you remember that someone has something against you, it, it's important that you leave your gift and you go and you make it right with that person. It is important that we make things right with people when they have hurt us or when we have hurt them. When they have done us wrong or we have done them wrong, it's important that we, we, we take the initiative to do it. But the truth is that sometimes people will not do that. And you may be in a forever wait for someone to apologize to you. You may be in that space where it will never happen that someone will say, I am sorry about what I did to you. Yes, it's the, the godly thing to do. It's the Christ-like thing to do. But not everybody is there. And so your weight could be an endless weight and you could actually sentence yourself to a life of unhappiness if you continue to wait for somebody else to do right by you. You see, if you truly want to be happy, it's not about what others need to do to you or do for you or give to you. Happiness is about giving. Happiness is more about expending than it is about expecting. I'll say that again. Happiness is more about expending than it is about expecting. In Matthew chapter 5, where we read, it's called the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. And uh, Brother Alvin did an awesome job expositing that back in November, December. Matthew chapter 5, from verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Blessed, 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 blessed. And we look at that word and it sounds good, uh, but when you look at that word, it is, it is a ve it's very important to note. It comes from the, the Greek word makarioi, makarioi, and it means happy. It means to be envied. It means supremely blessed. It means well off, blessed. I am blessed because I'm, 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 I'm supremely blessed. I am, I am well off. I'm in, a, I'm in a position where I'm not being boastful, but where I am, I'm in this space that is to be envied. I am happy. And so Jesus, in fact, is saying that if you want to be happy, if you want to be supremely blessed, then it's not about what you get from others, but, but about what you give, what you expend. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. This is not about expecting anything from anybody, but it's what you give off and give out. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the peacemakers. It's about what you expend and not about what you expect. Happiness is a choice. It's a choice. That's what it amounts to. You can't wait for somebody else to bring you into that space. You must choose to be in that space, regardless of what has happened to you, in spite of what is happening to you, and regardless of what you are going through. It is important that you make that choice, that you be intentional about bringing yourself to that space of happiness. Happiness is a choice. You have to be the one to choose to smile when there is no reason to smile. You have to be the one to choose to laugh 
when sadness looms all around you. You have to choose to sing even in the midst of your mourning. You have to choose to pray when everybody else is giving up. You have to choose to refuse defeat. You have to choose to refuse depression and anxiety and those negative thought patterns that pervade your minds. Happiness is a choice. Happiness is a choice. Sadness breaks the bones, but happiness cheers the heart. And so how do you get there? How do you get there? Through forgiveness. Forgiveness gives you the power to reclaim your happiness. Forgiveness brings you to that place where you can enjoy life's experiences in spite of the messes. Forgiveness gives you the power. Forgiveness allows you to take back control and to let go of the grip of whoever or whatever continues to hold on to you and control you. It allows you to take back the control from whoever it is that is, is occupying your mental space and that you're so preoccupied with that they are controlling your very reactions and your emotions. Forgiveness allows you to take that back and puts you back in the driver's seat. Forgiveness gives you power. In other words, forgiveness sets you free. And moves you beyond your pain. It's important to move beyond your pain, to see beyond your pain, to, to, to feel beyond your pain, and to experience the joys of life. We have all been dealt a, a deck of cards. Some of you may not like the illustration, but we've all been dealt a deck of cards. And it's not so much about what kind of hand you have been dealt what really matters is how you play the hand that you've been dealt how you react how you respond how you deal with the circumstances when they come across your way are you going to fold and fall are you going to crumble and die or are you going to stand up with courage and conviction that no matter what i will not lose my mind I will not lose my religion. I will not lose my hold on God. My faith will not falter. I will not allow doubt to take over my mind. I will not allow depression to sink me. It's not the hand that you've been dealt. It's how you play the hand. Yes, some of you might have been hurt and wounded, your hearts might have been broken. You might have experienced some type of abuse. Those are terrible things to happen and they have effect. They impact us physically, emotionally, psychologically. They, in, in, they impact us spiritually. But we must be confident that whatever it is that I'm going through, the fact is that I'm still here and it's because God is still watching over me. It's because he's made a way and he continues to make a way. Move beyond your pain and the way you move beyond the pain is to walk through the pain. You must be willing to walk through the pain. You must be willing to face it. And as you face it, then you move to forgiveness. You move beyond your pain by taking care of your thoughts. Watch what thoughts you allow to take your head space. Get rid of vain imaginings and, and negative thoughts and allow positive thoughts to 
flow through your mind. Take care of your thoughts and, and watch the words that flow from your lips. Speak happiness, speak peace, speak comfort, speak hope, speak love. Speak recovery, speak restoration, speak victory. And then assess your actions, your attitudes, your behaviors, assess that. Walk through the pain and move to a place of forgiveness. I say to you this evening as you listen, be happy. Be happy. Whatever it is that you need to, to face and to let go of, whoever it is that you, you need to forgive, be happy. God desires us to be happy. The psalmist said in Psalm 68 and verse 3, but may the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Be happy. Proverbs 3, 11 to 13. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. In other words, God is in control. And then he says, I know that there is nothing better for people than to what? Be happy and to do good while they live. That each of them may eat and drink and what? Find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. Happiness, satisfaction is the gift of God. Be happy. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 14, it says, when times are good, be happy. But when times are bad, consider this, God has made the one as well as the other. Therefore, no one can discover anything about their future. In other words, be, be happy in the good times, but remember that God is in control. So therefore, when times are bad, still be happy. Still be happy. Keep on singing. Keep on shouting. Keep on praising. Keep on praying. In the good times and the bad, praise his name. Praise his name. Isaiah, sorry, James chapter 5 and verse 13 says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. I say to you this evening, be happy. Be happy. Whatever the circumstance, be happy. Move yourself beyond the mundane. Move yourself beyond what everybody else thinks of you. And think about what God thinks of you. He has loved you with an everlasting love. Whatever it is that you're going through, whatever the pain, the hurt, the disappointment, whatever confusions, whatever brokenness. Be happy and tell yourself, I will be happy. I will be happy. Amen. Be happy. Maybe there is someone who's listening here. This is an opportunity if you have a testimony that you want to share with us. Maybe you're still struggling with being happy. Or maybe you have overcome unhappiness and you want to encourage us as to how you got to the next level. Is there someone who wants to share with us this evening about their experience of happiness? Anyone, anyone, any testimony? Just short, two minutes, three minutes about your experience with happiness or unhappiness. How God brought you through 
how you got over to the next side, how you were able to move in spite of what was happening to you, in spite of your experience, you got to that place where you experienced happiness. And you may even still be going through some stuff, but you have learned how to be, be happy. You have learned how to get into that space where you can still live a positive experience. Is there someone who wants to share with us? Yes, I just want to say, good evening to everybody. Good evening. I, I'm, I'm generally a happy person. That, that has been my, my um, experience. I grew up with my mother and my father, and we were a happy family. And um, I've never really had problems with being unhappy. I discovered that after I got married, things after a while got sour. But in spite of all of that, I was still a happy person. I didn't know how it happened, but I realized that I trusted God a lot. And um, I would pray for his peace. And I used to write a lot. I wrote in my journal to God what was happening what I couldn't verbalize to him, like if I knelt to pray and the words wouldn't come, but I would just ask God for his peace. And he just gave it to me copiously. I, I, I was at peace with myself. And um, another thing I discovered, which I keep saying, I think it's a gift from God, is that I, I don't bear grudges. So even when you've done me evil, I'm able to, to forgive and to move on, especially when I get a chance to talk about it, I do not keep it. So I'm not usually bound in that, uh, that space where I am unhappy because I've not forgiven somebody or anything like that. So what I would encourage persons to do is just give it to God and ask him for his peace and um, he will help you. There is a young lady that um, I do not dislike her um but she did something that i didn't like and i've not been able to talk to her about it about three other persons it was like three of them that have done me wrong and i have not been able to talk to any of them but i discovered that i was able to let go of two of them but this one in particular was just a bother and I kept praying about it and I kept praying about it. And I said, Lord, you know, um, it's, I, I never had anything in here. I don't know if I know how to explain it. I just never had a good feeling. I, I, um, I just felt that, you know, something is happening and it shouldn't be happening, but I, I didn't dislike her or anything like that. And um, it just so happened that I was able to be in a space and I said, I need to reach out to her. And I said, Father God, you need to help me to do this because I don't have the feeling that I should do that. But I did. And I felt so much better afterwards. I felt so much better. I felt relieved and I felt, no, Lord, you can help me to move on by being able to say, all right, I do not feel any resentment or anything toward this person, even though you know she had done me this and I think it was so unfair and unkind. So I'm basically happy. And that, that I believe is because whenever I fall into problems, which I have so many, so many challenges even now, I just give it to God and ask him for his peace and he takes me through. That is my testimony. Thank you for sharing. So prayer gets you through. Forgiveness gets you through. And I also hear you say that you, you journal, you write things down. That helps to keep you in that happy space. Thank you so much for sharing. Is there anyone else? who would like to share their testimony with us this evening. We're going to be praying soon, shortly. 
Anybody else? All right. If we have no other testimony, then we will just move to the prayer requests. Uh, does uh, anybody have any prayer requests that they want to share with us this evening? Anybody? Yes, I would. Uh, one of my neighbors has just been admitted to the hospital. She has colon cancer and she's in a whole lot of pain. I was asking for prayer for her. They are deciding um, whether they should go ahead with surgery or not. And it's been said that it's a 50-50 chance that she would survive it because it's so bad. So just please keep her in your prayers for me, please. Her What's her first Ina. name? Miss Ina? Ina? Yeah. yeah. Miss Ina, okay. Hospitalized with cancer. We'll remember Miss Ina. Any other requests? Group is mighty quiet tonight. All right, we will um, remember the ongoing request that we have. Uh, we have the Thomas and Davila family. We want to still keep them on our prayer list uh, after they lost their mom, Sister Ruth, who was faithfully a part of Eden Home Ministries. Remember Tathleen Coke, she's in Florida there. She's struggling with all kinds of physical ailments. Uh, she has a son who is autistic and a husband who is uh, severely diabetic. Remember Tathleen. Sister Elaine was also struggling with um, sicknesses, um, vision issues, um, and other problems. We continue to pray for Sister Angelia uh, as well. Keep her on the list. Dennis. We don't have any update from Dennis, but um, he has um, been diagnosed with several different cancers as well. And new on the list is um, Darla Van Putten. She's um, popped in a couple of times on Eden Home Ministries, but she's an associate of mine and she uh, recently lost her father. Um, so keep Darla in your prayer as she also mourns the loss of her father. And then we want to remember those who are dealing with sickle cell disease and cancer, uh, Mishka Hamilton, Kessner Sterling, Lenora Price, and uh, Dominic Schneider, to keep them in prayer. And then we also want to pray for families and marriages, pray for the growth in Eden Home Ministries, Pray for spiritual maturity and pray that God will infuse our ministry with new ministers, you know, men and women who can come in and minister to us um, in Eden Home Ministries. We want to pray for that. All right. Uh, are there any other requests? Has anybody thought of any other requests? All right. At this time, then we will. Um, we will just go to, to, to pray uh, and believe that God, God makes a way. He makes a way. We're here because God makes a way. Let us bow our heads as we petition the throne this evening. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing us together. We thank you for those who are here in the Zoom room, and we thank you for those who are joining the live stream on Facebook and those who will, will listen to this message sometime in the future. Lord, I pray that you will bring us to that place of forgiveness so that we can experience your joy. We can live a life of happiness. I pray, oh God, that you will remove negativity, remove those negative thoughts from our, our hearts, oh God, and Help us that we will forgive, forgive those who have hurt us and those we have hurt. 
so that we can experience true happiness. Lord, your desire is that we be, we be happy. And so God, we come tonight and we want to remember those who need you in a special way. Sister Ina needs you now, Lord. She's just been admitted in the hospital with cancer. You are still the bomb in Gilead. And God, we know that you can take care of cancers. You can remove cancer cells, Lord. And so God, we claim now healing for Miss Ina. We claim strength in her body. I pray even now that you will be in the space with those doctors who are attending to her, Lord, and that you will infuse them with your wisdom so that they will make good decisions about the care for Miss Ina. And, O oh Lord, I pray at the day that you rise, you raise her up, O oh God, that she will be totally surrendered to you and that she will rejoice in the salvation that you bring to her heart. We continue to pray for Lynette and Roger Thomas and her brother, her brother's family, the Davila family, that you will continue to be with them and, and comfort them as they continue to deal with the loss of their mother. That, oh God, in those moments when they feel wounded and, and downcast, that, oh God, you will, you will lift their spirits. We pray for Tatlin and her family, Lord, that you will minister to their situation, Lord, that you will uh, be with them through all the physical ailments that they're suffering with. We pray for Elaine and Angelia and Dennis, who is struggling with cancer. Remember Darla, who just lost her father. I pray, O oh God, that you will comfort her with the comfort that only you can give so that she will know that you are an ever-present help in time of trouble, in time of mourning, and that she can be still and know that you are God. We continue to pray for those who are struggling and dealing with sickle cell disease and, and cancer. God, you promise that you will do great things in our lives and you have also given us the power to pray over sickness and and that people will be healed we've been praying lord and sometimes we question what is happening but this one thing i know oh god that we are not going to give up we are not going to be daunted by what is happening because we know that you do all things in your time. You make things beautiful in its time. And so God, I pray that even while these, your children are going through these sufferings, oh God, that you will give them your peace and that they will experience happiness. I pray God that you will bring forgiveness to those who need it and for those whose healing may be hindered because of some unforgiveness i pray oh god that you will reveal yourself to them and show them what needs to be done so that they can free themselves to experience your boundless love and healing we thank you for eden home ministries oh god we pray for the families, we pray for marriages, not just in Eden home, but in our world, Lord, marriages are being destroyed. But we pray, O oh God, that you will strengthen those marriages, that you will give wisdom to those who are entering marriages, O oh God, so that they can make good decisions. We pray that you will grow Eden home ministries. We we long to see this room filled with people. 
listening and hearing and, and praising God for the freedom that they find in Jesus Christ. So we pray for growth in Eden Home Ministries. We pray, oh God, that you will continue to mature us spiritually so that we will begin to see ourselves not, not as just spectators, but that we will recognize that spiritually we all need to be in the ring. We all need to be ministering together. Give us the willingness and the spiritual maturity to be able to do that which we are called upon to do with willingness. Lord, send us new ministers. There is so much that we would like to do. We pray that you will infuse this ministry with men and women who would be willing to lift up the name of Jesus to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom so that we can experience richness and happiness in the kingdom now. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everyone that's present here tonight. Bless every home represented. Bless every family. Bless the marriages. Bless the children. Bless the spouses. Bless the extended families. Those who are not here, Lord, who couldn't make it tonight, wherever they are, may they sense your presence. Lord, help us that it will be our resolve to be happy, to forgive, and to move beyond our pain. And so God, even in the midst of our trouble, we say thank you. In the midst of our struggle, we sing. In the midst of our hurt and disappointment, we pray, we shout, be happy. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to experience happiness. Thank you for blessing this kingdom petition service this evening. May every person who is here and who is hearing, Lord, leave with a revived spirit. May they be rejuvenated. May they have a new resolve to walk in the kingdom, and to experience happiness. Thank you for victory. Thank you for recovery. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for healing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give
shine on you. His favor be upon you in a thousand generations. And your family, your children, their children, their children. His favor be upon you in a thousand generations. And your family, your children, and their children. Their children may favor be upon you in a thousand generations. And your family, your children, their children, their children may upon you in a thousand generations. And your family, your children, their children. The children in his presence before and behind you, beside you, all around you, within you, he is with you, it's with you. In your coming, your going, in your weeping, rejoicing, he is for you, it's for you. Is for you. Oh, it's for you. Oh, oh, amen. 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 And your family, your children, their children, the children, his friends, for you and behind you, beside you, all around you, and then he is for you. In your calling, at your boy, in your week. Rejoicing is for you. He is for you. Oh, may peace be with you tonight. Oh. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. That's our prayer for you as we end tonight, that you will experience God's blessing, God's peace, and God's happiness. Just want to share a few reminders with you as we close out. Uh, Again, we are here every Wednesday evening. Please join us and invite family and friends to join us for our kingdom petition service every Wednesday evening at 7.30. And then on Saturday mornings at 11, we have our kingdom proclamation. We are the KP ministry. Kingdom petition, kingdom proclamation. Uh, so join us on Saturday for kingdom proclamation. And then in the afternoon, we have our Bible study at 2.30, led out by Brother Alvin Jones and his wife, Aloma. Again, we thank you for joining us for Kingdom Petition. Those who joined us for the live stream on Facebook, we thank you. Thank you. Please like and share this message with friends and family. God bless you. And I hope you all have a good night. And I will see you on Saturday.